So thank you very much for the opportunity um, to provide you an update about what we are doing in that field. So um, we all have seen that the world is changing a lot um, with blockchain economics a couple of years back, starting with crypto, developing enterprise applications around um, NFTs, distributed storage, the metaverse, now AI, and a lot of more things um, are getting to come. So today, I want to give you a little bit about insights about um, what we are doing in terms of that, how the CPU, the graphics, and the software ecosystem is working together, particularly around uh, machine learning and AI workloads. So, um, but um, I want to start with a rough overview. Um, I have used already a couple of times and it's very interesting how the development is ongoing and how we can see similar challenges, um, similar issues happening with each and every technology coming to the market. And um, so here you can see an overview about the Web3 development, which is very interesting, um, starting with um, the wide web um, 1.0, followed by um, the big players, Amazon um, and Facebook and Google. Um, I think we all remember that time, small companies where a lot of doubts were into the market that they will survive. And look, um, now 20 years later, they dominating um, in various areas in that field. And just one small anecdote, um, I still remember very well, um, it was published in, in the Forbes magazine about Amazon launching their first um, e-shop um, in 1999. And um, they just um, yeah, calculated how much energy and how much resources it will take in that ecosystem to place an order on Amazon. And um, it was, very fascinating to see, similar um, to the back times of, of the mining or now AI, where the people having doubts, is this the right technology? So much energy is needing, um, needed, it's bad for our planet, and um, nobody needs it. They came to the conclusion that um, for one order um, through the existing system in end of the 90s, it takes them two pounds of coal. And then, of course, as a lot of people are doing, okay, that's one order, so let's get it multiplied with all the people on planet Earth. And then, oh my God, catastrophe. This technology will not sustain, that's bad. It will destroy our planet and it's wasting our resource. And if you wanna go out um, or if you wanna go shopping, go out and go to the store. So now, more than 20 years later, it's a standard. Right, so we're using those interfaces and we even do not think anymore about it because it's a part of our life. Similar, we have experienced in, in the blockchain ecosystem. So um, where we had similar articles about um, various of different um, concepts coming to a similar conclusion. And um, I think that's the interesting part where we need to think about Technology will survive if it makes our life more easy. And that's the key value. If you have um, a benefit um, to the end customer, then he will make sure purchasing your solution, using your solution, and you will become um, successful. Um, very interesting to see is um, what we have seen with um, the NFT, with the DeFi tokens, the metaverse, and now um, heading into machine learning and um, AI workloads. So um, here I just want to give you a little bit more overview um, where um, those locations are around the globe, um, specific in regards um, to, to machine learning. It's a kind of an expon exponential growing business segment. And um, we, we don't believe that this will be anytime soon flatten or even going down. The demand will even increase more and more. And um, given to that fact, it is important um, to have a high efficient solution to, to save our planet, um, to improve the TCO costs and to reduce um, the carbon dioxide um, footprint. So um, those are just um, a couple of examples um, where people currently um, investing into those solutions. Um, for example, based on AMD having Epic solutions with Instinct MI250 um, working together 
optimized um, for machine learning and um, HPC high performance compute um, workloads. So there are a couple of partners, you know, um, supercomputers, the Frontier, Lumi um, in, in Europe, um, Pense, um, and um, KT, KT's Korean Telecom, um, they just um, started um, with the um, data center setup um, equipped um, with those components, specific bare metal access um, for machine learning, because currently all the different um, developers in that area, they want to have native access um, to the hardware to get the full performance out without any um, penalties, um, for example, caused by a container-based um, um, subsystem. Um, Microsoft Azure and um, ELUVP um, is um, starting a new data center um, opportunity, which is great. There will be more information um, to come soon. So um, this is the concept I mentioned already. We need to drive efficiency. So that means you have a data center infrastructure and you need to make sure that the, the data center is utilized 24 by 7, best case 100%. Then you have the highest efficiency and um, you, can, you can work with different customer opportunities here. So um, there is a solution based on a container concept um, with, um, with a software provisioning ecosystem which is detecting idle hardware which can be utilized for different workloads, AI, HPC, um, um, distributed storage, um, so doing the validation parts and um, CK. So um, another aspect is the software ecosystem because we all know the best hardware will be useless if you do not have the proper software ecosystem for the developers um, as well as for the data centers. And um, similar to the blockchain ecosystem in AI, we can see a similar behavior from um, the software companies not relying on proprietary um, solutions because they know we need to drive competition and um, competition can be only driven if you have several manufacturers in the market. And um, just to give you an example, um, speaking to PyTorch people, it's very interesting just to ask them, so why you're not only going with NVIDIA as we know that currently the majority is running on NVIDIA hardware? And they made the point clear, yeah, maybe that's the status quo, but um, have a look. Um, there are other manufacturers coming out specific on the software side of things. We need to make sure ARM will be supported, x86 will be supported, FPGAs will be supported, um, Intel will be supported, NVIDIA and AMD. So you need to make sure that everybody can play in that field. And this is driving innovation. Um, having a competitive um, market. And this is always a good thing for everybody because we have experienced already in the past what will happen if there is only one manufacturer in the market, price goes up, there will be shortages and all these kind of things. And at the end, the complete ecosystem um, will suffer. So um, having said, most of those um, um, APIs already going the open source approach. So talking um, about PyTorch, um, even Llama from Meta, which um, in the beginning decided um, to go their own way. They opened their platform now. And um, with, with Hacking Face, um, with Triton, Jax, um, and to give you one more example, TensorFlow um, was a really good example. So um, two and a half years back, they had a big pie um, of that market share. So if you look into the car, uh, current numbers, two thirds of that is already um, owned by PyTorch because it's supported by any platform and um, it's, it's used by the majority um, of people. And here um, we are working with them together, making sure that our ROCKM um, ecosystem is working um, with the infrastructure. And um, so if, if you, for example, go to the PyTorch webpage, they have, and I like this really a lot, they have a kind of a box system where you can just click your hardware, you can click your OS um, and your ecosystem, and then they will come out um, with the right parameters, how to install PyTorch so that every hardware in your data center will be utilized um, as um, a maximum. 
So um, giving you a little bit more insight about um, what we are doing in, in the CPU side of things. So um, we, we just recently um, launched our Genoa parts. So those are um, the latest and greatest um, CPU parts. And um, we are having our key pillars here, what we are supporting in that ecosystem. And this is definitely HPC, high performance compute, enterprise um, IT, cloud, um, where storage is underneath as well, machine intelligence, so ML and AI, and virtualization and um, cloud gaming. Also in regards um, to the products, you can see all the different um, um, subsets. So um, for example, um, our Instinct, that's the graphics, the Epic, which are our CPUs, um, Alivo and Versal are our Silinx um, products and um, Pensando, which are doing um, network um, infrastructure. And just coming back to the AI point, it's very interesting where AI finds its adoption. For example, in network switches, we, we all know the challenges, um, having um, intrusions, having breaks um, for or intruders um, where people trying um, to get into a network and um, um, stealing data or manipulating data. So um, they are really great concepts and ideas about getting um, those parts as well already into the network switches um, with DPUs. Um, in getting the efficiency a lot better to detect intrusion um, already right in time before it will happen. So very interesting things um, going on here in, in that regards. So um, how is this all working together? So um, we, AMD, we decided a couple of years back um, to do our bet on, on chiplet um, architecture. So why we are using chiplet architecture? Because we know that different customers um, will have different needs. And I always express it as a kind of um, a legal um, subsystem. So what is chiplet? You have a base plate, which is um, your substrate or your place you can put the components on. And then you have different bricks you can put on the plate, limited just um, by the size. You can put everything on in you like. So you can put a 4x4 four four brick, which is a CPU. You can put um, a 6x2 brick, um, which is maybe um, a GPU. You can add an FPGA um, and you can customize. So some customers, they want to have more CPU cores. The other ones, they want to have more um, GPU cores or specific AI functionality. And um, this technology has been proven. Um, it's uh, getting a standard. So also competition is, is following um, this kind of concept because we are all driven by efficiency. So um, efficiency in terms of a silicon vendor is the yield rate. So you have the wafer and you need to make sure to get the maximum um, out of um, the chips. And this you can reach with small components. So that means the smaller it will be, the better the yield rate will be. So the bigger, the more terrible it will be. And with chiplet architecture, um, we um, can do those um, um, things in putting different um, components together. This is also um, further advanced in even moving in 3D. So that means um, those components are even stackable. And um, you have maybe seen this already on HBM technology, high bandwidth memory, which is um, being used um, by graphics cards, um, where you can stack um, the modules already. And so four, six, and up to eight modules already you can connect together, driving efficiency as well as um, performance and with lower latency values. So. Um, we also understand that different customers, they have different demands. So um, we have spoken a lot about um, AI and machine learning. There's HPC, there is the storage business. All those um, different um, verticals, they have different demands um, on the CPU. And um, therefore, um, we have three different kind of products. So where we can um, go more on the core density. Core density means um, you have the highest amount of cores, so up to 128. Um, we have um, high frequency parts, so specific for applications where IPC is important. Um, you can get the maximum performance out. And um, they are the parts where um, we have um, a lot of cache. 
So those are the X parts. And just imagine, um, so on a standard um, EPIC processor, we have something around 384 megabyte of cache. And on the X parts, you have 1.1 1 .1, um, gigabyte of cache. And if you have your application running inside this cache, you will be a lot faster. And this is exactly the reason why we have this wide spectrum um, of um, customer solutions to fill every needs. Because we know, for example, AI, if you have um, a 7 billion model, you can run it on a 96 core Epic without any issues. Um, but if you have a storage server, you, you don't need that many cores. And um, you can use um, um, a system which is having less cores, but maybe higher frequency. So um, this is just an overview about um, um, the products. And again, so it's, um, it's very um, diversified in terms of the application needs. And um, in regards to the feature set, all the feature sets will be available um, from the low end up to um, the high end. There is no sacrifice um, in regards of features if you take, um, for example, a 16 core um, um, Epic CPU. So I'm um, coming to the graphics instinct. And um, this um, area is very interesting and very important um, for machine learning. So um, here, um, I just want to give you an overview about um, the Instinct products um, we, we have in the market. So starting um, from the left side with the MI50, MI60, a couple of years back, the MI100, and now um, the, the MI200, um, which um, is called CDNA from the architecture. So basically, um, we have two different architectures. So there is the first called RDNA, which is used by consumer and workstations. And we have CDNA, which is used um, for compute, specific tailored um, for those high computational um, workloads. And near time soon to have a sneak preview, the MI300 series, um, which you will see um, in the next um, couple of weeks with enhanced um, capabilities. So um, this is giving you an overview about um, the solution. And also here in the graphics side of things, it's becoming more dense. It's becoming more efficient. And that's important um, to drive our ecosystem. So um, on the left side, we have the PCIe model, the MI210. And on the right side, and this is getting more and more standard, the OAM um, board module solution. So it's, it's, it's a board-to-board -board connector, which you can directly put um, um, to the server. And um, this is having an incredible amount of frame buffer which again is important for machine learning and um, AI workloads, as well as a high throughput on the memory using um, the latest um, architecture, so HBM um, 2E, um, with 3.2 terabyte um, per, per second in throughput. So um, here again, this is just summarizing um, the, the ecosystem, um, which um, shows the importance about the different key pillars. So um, compute, we need to have workload um, optimized um, drivers and um, applications working um, with the different partners together. Um, memory, it's really seriously important um, to have the latest and greatest technology based on HBM. And it's, it's very interesting how fast um, those um, technologies are growing, specific now moving into 3D stacks um, of the memory architecture. Networking, um, getting everything together, having interconnects, which are working um, with, with each other. So we call it um, infinity fabric. So that means um, each and every GPU can interconnect with each other without needing um, the CPU, saving time, having reduced latency, and um, driving in efficiency on that. Software ecosystem, again, um, here it is important um, to have all the software partners at the same page with a base subset um, of drivers and tools um, to make it available um, for all the customer applications in, in the most um, easy way. And um, I will show you a little bit more about um, what we are offering here for our partners and um, the ecosystem. 
So um, this is just, um, you, you see the interconnect between um, the GPUs. Um, we know that the requirements specific on machine learning and AI is high efficiency. And that means you need to make sure that all the compute components are working together. Because um, if, you just, um, um, if you just verify what um, or how much compute capability or requirements are necessary for a large language model, it's insane. So um, if, if you want to train a neural network from scratch um, and um, having whatever um, 70 billion parameters, for example, built in, you need a couple of hundred GPUs. And therefore, you need to have the mechanism inside the data center to have the complete ecosystem optimized and tailored so that each and every component can work with each other to really have a scaling approach um, with all the compute you are putting into the data center. So this is the same thing um, for the, the MI250. Um, you also see um, some um, um, performance figures. Um, we have spoken about it is really important um, to have a lot of frame buffer, specific in the, um, in the uh, machine learning space. So the more frame buffer you have, the more efficient you can um, run your LLMs, for example. Coming to the ROCKM software ecosystem. So this is really a part um, we are really proud of. So because we know that in that community, a lot of people are working with CUDA. And um, they're asking, OK, how can we get this CUDA code um, enabled um, for AMD graphics um, solution? And um, here we did a big step forward. So um, basically, we, um, we have two different workloads, right? So you have the training and you have the inference. So the, the training is divided into two. So you have um, the model creation. This is when you need to start from scratch to train the neural network. And you have the model training. That means you are working already with a predefined neural network and you just get new information into this grid. Um, inference is the stuff you are working with predefined um, models, like in a switch, so where you have predefined rules and now letting the AI um, working to find um, intruders, for example, or um, a typical um, workload is image detection, stable diffusion, and um, all these kind of things. So to get a software ecosystem um, supported by a, um, a verity and a big part of the community, you need to open it. So um, here with ROCKM57, um, we enabled our, um, all our Navi um, consumer as well as workstation GPUs um, for AI workloads. So that means you are installing ROCKM and um, you can start to develop and um, your applications um, based on workstation as well as um, consumer hardware. Because we all know that the community is a very important part to drive technology. So if the community is taking um, up um, of a new technology, then we know software will get developed, software will get optimized, and the customer uh, will use it. So um, those are the, the tools um, we are providing. So um, there is um, a big tool set um, we are offering, for example, um, HIP. Um, HIP is an application um, which is transcoding um, CUDA code into um, ROCKM. And this is working quite nice. So um, we have a lot of examples, for example, um, based on machine learning and AI, where you can use existing code, um, CUDA code, to transfer um, into ROCKM. This works um, until you have hardware-specific optimizations, of course. So if you have um, code injected, um, which is based on assembler, talking to specific registers, then um, you need to adapt this um, to, to every technology, which is um, different. So um, those tools are used um, more and more and will be continuously um, developed in that segment. And this is important um, just to show you um, how it is working. So once you have installed the ROCKM ecosystem, you don't need to change anything in terms of um, the coding. So if you have then um, something developed in, um, in Python, you can use the same script and it will run um, on the machine. And this is um, equal for PyTorch, Ongs, TensorFlow, um, JAX, 
and um, it's, it's working with the various um, subset of components. And that's an important part for the developer because the developer, they don't want to choose the right um, device. They just want to work with their tools to getting their problem solved and applications um, developed. And um, this is just an um, example um, about um, the code. So you can really use um, the CUDA code and um, this can be used on, on a ROCKM-based installed um, infrastructure in your data center. So there, of course, there is a clear um, roadmap perspective on that. This will be continuously developed further. Um, there is um, a repository we, we launched um, on, on GitHub as well as on, on our web page. So where you can see all the different features and functions um, for the hardware to drive. So there are, for example, features like um, ROCKM SMI, which is really a nice um, tool um, where you can optimize um, your data centers and um, your servers in terms of um, um, feature sets. So for example, you can change um, clocks, um, you can um, change um, voltages, you can even um, turn on, turn off um, 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 CUs, compute units on the graphic side of things. Um, you can track status, you can change power profiles. So that means you can really tailor and optimize um, to your needs. And this is giving you an additional advantage, specific if you're offering your solution as a TCO calculation, total cost of ownership, and having additional value um, versus your um, competition. That's it from my side. So if there are any questions, um, I will be around um, today and tomorrow. Feel free to ask any question and thank you very much for your time. <laughs>